Hi, my name is Narsimha Badrinath and I am a senior developer advocate at DigitalOcean. In today's video, we are going to talk about this application called GIF Creator. As the name says, we are going to create a GIF image, but by just using a single sentence or a prompt. How are we going to do that? So after accepting the prompt from the user, we are going to pass this to a flux image generation model that is going to give us a image which is according to the prompt and we are going to pass that image to our image to video generation model one of the stable diffusion models and then after the video is generated which is going to be of three to four seconds long we are going to pass that to our utility which is going to give us a simple gif image as you can imagine this is actually a very heavy intensive operation so this requires a good gpu power because of that, we are going to use the GPU droplets, which are backed by H100 GPUs. Let's see how we're going to do that. Okay, first thing, let's look at the prerequisites. We need a DigitalOcean account and that can be created using this DigitalOcean link. You can just go to this link and create a DigitalOcean account. Then I personally prefer DevoCTL CLI because it's very easy. I can keep it ready with the parameters and then I can just run it. But we can also use the GPU droplets UI to create other GPU droplet. Basically, we do have this option in the website if we come here. So GPU droplets, this is the new entry in the menu. So if when it opens, we can just choose uh, basically everything that we would want in the DOCTL command is available here as well. So the data center, the OS to choose and the plan that we need and then what is the SSH key. The SSH key can be easily created coming to this settings. You can just click on the settings and when this opens up, there is a security tab under this and you can add the SSH key here. So if SSH key is not generated, you can generate using SSH key gen and when it is generated, the public key can be copied to here, this particular section and then give a name to it. And once that is done, you will get a different or new entry into this table so the fingerprint can be copied so where that would be useful is when we actually execute this command the ssh keys here is where we can give the fingerprint so basically both ways can be done i just have this created very easily because of that i'm going to show the devoctl way in this demo as well so let's do that for that, let's switch to uh, the VS code. In the VS code, let me open a terminal. Yeah, this is the terminal. And then here, we'll copy this and paste it. DOCTL compute a droplet, create, and this is the name of the droplet that we need. And this is the region and image, the size, the SSH keys is what I have copied from there in the GP, uh, settings SSH key tab. So once this is pasted, I'm going to say enter. And then we see that it gives the details of the GPU droplet. It is going to provision. It is actually provisioning at the moment. How we can check that, we can just go back to the DigitalOcean website and we can just check the projects. I, I do have this project called Demo Cloud. And in this one, we can see that the AI ML Bootstrapper is the name that I gave for the GPU droplet and it is still under provisioning. So this is going to take just some time and we can just continue that once it is done. Okay, so the AI ML bootstrapper, the droplet which I actually wanted to create is provisioned. So we can just go inside this to see all the details of the GPU droplet. There are multiple tabs to go into each of those details to see more of each of those topics. In this particular case, I would be needing only the IP address of the machine because I want to copy and then use it to do a remote SSH onto this machine, then ensure that I have a cloned i do clone this repository and then finally execute the application so i'm gonna copy this ip address and then i'll go back to the vs code and here i do have already installed the remote extension because of which i'll get connect to host and then i can add a new ssh host ssh root at this is the ip address i'm gonna paste and once i enter I'm going to add it to the configs, uh, list of config and then I'm going to click to connect and then if I get a continue, yes, I would want to continue and then in just a few seconds, this 
GPU droplet machine will be connected and I'll be able to access the machine from this VS code in my local itself. And how do I know that? We can just open a terminal and I can just, the root at AIML bootstrapper tells me that. Also I can just do LS and I know that the machine is connected. So once this is done, the next steps is to, we can just clone and then we're gonna take a look at the next steps. Okay, the next step is cloning the repository. So in the VS code, we are already in the GPU droplet. So let's copy this and uh, execute it here. So basically this will, okay, it is not copied. Let me copy this and then execute it. So this should clone the repository as well as move or uh, navigate to the AI uh, ML bootstrapper and the GIF creator folder inside that. So okay, if I do ls, then it will display all the files that are present in the GIF creator. So once that is done, so we are going to start with creating the virtual environment. So we start with the package, which is important to ensure that we can create the Python environment, virtual environment itself. So let's run that and give yes. So once this is done, we're going to copy Python 3 virtual environment creation. All right. Okay. Okay. And then let's create a Python virtual environment and uh, we're going to move into that and then we're going to install the dependencies as well so i'm going a little fast here because these are probably the common steps that we do just to install uh, and run the application in a virtual environment this is going to take just a few some time so i'm going to pause okay so all the necessary libraries that are in the requirements.txt is installed and the next thing is the most important here is that Hugging Face CLI login. So this is required because we are using the models that are present in the Hugging Face and this helps us to log into the CLI or Hugging Face and then download the models. So we can do that by just, it has not copied. So let me copy that again. So let's copy this. It's clear, paste it. And then this is going to ask a token. So basically it also says that here you can go and, go and create a token for yourself. I have already done that. So I'm just going to paste the token, which I have already created going to that particular link. So after this, so I do not want to add this into a grid credential. I'll say no, but it's once it is done, it says login is successful. That means we are able to now download the models from the hugging face. So this is the last but one step the final step is to just run the application so here is where we're going to use the python 3 gif web.py and let's try to run the application okay to run the application let's copy this python gif web.py and let's go back to the vs code and uh, let's clear this paste and run this application GIF web is the gradio application which is uh, having the ui and uh, this is going to uh, open the URL in 127.0.0.17860. So let's open this and uh, let's bring this up here. All right. So our application is running and uh, you can see that uh, these are the UI components that it has. It is kept simple that there is a prompt for users to enter. There are some examples to try the number of inference steps to control the image quality and then the guidance scale to see to it that how much it has to adhere to the prompt that is given the image generation and then the seed value so we can just try with let's say one of the you know prompts let's say in this case i'm going to try an animated tortoise crossing the road so i'll just try to keep this value a little higher so that it's it's going to take a little more steps but still i want a little better quality of the image that is generated and I want it more aligned with the prompt that I have given. I'll keep the seed as 42 itself and I'm going to click generate GIF. So this is going to take some time because it is doing a lot of things in the background. So based on the prompt, it has to generate, it has to first download the flux model. It is using the flux model in the, as the image generation model. And then it has to generate image using the flux model. After that, it is going to use that image and then 
pass it on to the stable diffusion image to video generation model and it is going to generate a video of 3 to 4 seconds and then finally a utility will be used to convert the video into GIF. So it is going to take some time but we are going to come back right on to it the moment it is done. Alright, so here is the GIF that is generated. So you can see that we asked for an animated tortoise crossing the road. So it has done a decent job, only probably the blinking of the eyes, it could have done better, but yes. So that's where we can actually you know, play around with the guidance scale, the number of steps and even the seed to see that how by changing the different combinations of this, we can get the image, the better quality image to start with and then how it actually translates to the moments when it creates the video. And then finally the GIF that it gets generated. Generated. So let's try with some other, let's say animated castle in the clouds. So let's give this a try and let me create the GIF generate. So let's come back to it. All right, so it is generated. So this looks actually better because we are asking for this castle to be with in the clouds. So this actually looks much, much better. So probably we can actually play around with multiple animated images to start off and then create it as GIF. So yeah, this is the way we can just give simple you know, prompt here and then a behind the scenes handle creating the uh, image and then using the image to video generation and then to GIF. So a lot can be done. We can even extend this solution by providing the user to uh, just display the image what is generated and then the video also and GIF also so that user can just use whichever is needed. If it's the image needed directly, the image can be downloaded even the video or the GIF. So we can just simply extend this solution to those features as well. All right. So that's what I wanted to cover as part of this. So thank you so much and probably we'll see you in the next video. Bye.